Okay, this game, um, I did not like this game at all. I did not like the way I played this game, let's put it that way. And so, develop the night. The Fianchetto again going with this um, slow development type thing. So I think this is another key game of learning for myself. And as we go through, I'll reiterate it for myself so that hopefully it sticks in for the next batch of games. So pawn takes, pretty simple straightforward stuff. So the idea is really just to keep things basic and keep it as simple as possible. Not overworking pieces or anything like that. Try and work the pieces together. So bringing the queen up now because it's um, got a potential attack here on the rook. Knight comes and defends. So at this moment, just obviously maybe thinking, just getting the getting the bishop out somehow, maybe or something, you know, making space for the king. Developing the knight, getting the bishops out, bishop attacking, or pushing the pawn onto the knight. So now the knight can come out and attack our queen. So this side of things, this is where it started for me, where I said, as soon as I pushed the pawn, I said to myself, why did you push that pawn? Your main piece, your queen, can be attacked. So now it's going to be overworked. So I'm sat there and I'm thinking, I'm going to get arty. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking, oh, you know, swinging it around the place, you know. And I'm sat there thinking, yeah, this is a good move. This is a good, yeah, this is going to work. When really, you know, just bring the queen back and get yourself settled. Then your queen's not being chased around and your king's not getting in check from their queen and all sorts of situations and it's not a position that you're not familiar with or you don't like because it doesn't really enhance anything so that was the big takeaway from this um, this particular game there's a moment to attack the piece you know a smaller piece attacking a higher piece and then there's a moment to sit back and take a look make sure that you're properly awake So as you see, we took a bit of time over this particular move, thinking, yeah, we're bringing it across. Knight takes the pawn, but when you look at it, it's just giving them a tactic. You know, it's giving them the tactic of the queen coming here, and we've got the queen stuck on the other side of the ball, and we haven't developed any of our other pieces. So right from the get-go, it's a little bit of a shambles. So we're captured. Queen comes down, puts the check on. Like I said, we're constantly giving Stockfish these positions and if we just sat back a little bit, I'm glad we're doing these before the over, over the board tournament, I tell you, because just getting all of this um, stuff out of the way and so we can play some proper chess. It's like just getting out the ideas that you might want to try, you know, in the games and just get them all out and then just then start playing your normal chess. So they put a check on. So as you can see our pieces aren't working together. It's it's not a major thing, it's just it's it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like I'm uh, managing my own pieces and my movement on the board. So yes, my queen is in a position that really, it's like thinking, well, yeah, if he castles, then we're going to do some damage over here at some point. Potentially the bishop coming here. That's longer term. I don't have time to do that. So we bring the queen across, looking to see if we can exchange. Bringing it back into the game, see if we can do some damage here. But it's definitely overworking the queen already.
queen's having none of it so we bring the bishop again looking to attack the queen smaller piece attacking a higher piece usually can't be wrong so we say so it's showing minus 1.1 at the moment for black even though they're just shuffling their queen around it's got a nice discover check on our queen not liking the position of my pieces one bit could attack it again could attack not that way sorry could attack it again bishop could attack it Bishop attacks, but probably maybe to the wrong side. I think it was blocking off the queen take, attacking this pawn. This is why we put the bishop there. So all the other attacks would have meant we would have been a pawn down. So the queen's still moving. And they're losing their advantage a little bit at a time. So we attack it one more time, but the computer's saying we should have just left it alone. There was no need for that because now what you've done is weakened the square. Knight can take, and then we're losing the combination. The bishop can take here, and we're going to basically lose our queen in a sense. Or we're going to be down material. So we grab, grab feeling that we're winning out somewhere but um, I think we were very lucky because the bishop should have taken if the bishop had taken then we would have been really stuck because he's got a check on our king so fortunately they took with the knight which gave us a little bit of an in because we could save our queen so that was the smallest of errors move orders these do happen in games maybe not as blatant as not actually capturing the queen but the initial onset the start of this um, whole position was really bad so i'm definitely not celebrating this game whatsoever because we ended in a position we didn't even like we overworked the queen didn't have our pieces working together so from this point on I'm just saying well okay it's going to be very hard pressed for them to actually win this game now we do have a queen on the board and now it should be plain sailing after this point really but how we got here well we left the shells of the egg in the omelette that's all I would have to say on this one it did not taste good okay so we continued on so at the end of the day these things can and do happen and it's being able to take the opportunity to grab the opportunity but this one's left a bitter taste in my mouth um, just from the outset that was just a terrible opening wasn't very clever I uh, thought I was being clever with my queen, moving it about. You get into those states, especially playing over the board, where you, you think you see stuff that, oh, this is going to look fantastic when I get this home. Um, but you need to, I need to jump out of that mind frame and just think, well, look, what is actually happening on the board here? And deal with what is actually happening. So... I then said to myself, okay, this is going to help me try and practice the end game then. So let's get rid of the... Oops, being a bit previous there. Let's get rid of the um, bad opening and the misfortune of the opponent not taking the queen. Let's see how we can practice our end game. Because that always needs work. Oh, I'm even more previous, aren't I? There we go. Let's 
So soaking in the situation, still based on the fact that I am playing stockfish, so is he gonna come out with some magical stuff? Because in the one where he did come out with the magical stuff, I mean, he basically um, gave up his rook and stuff and he still won. So I was just looking to see, is, is he getting my queen off the board somehow? But in this situation, I think it'd be, be very hard pressed to actually grab the queen, um, unless of course I did something really, really bad, which can happen. So the rook comes across defending the pawn. Like I said, this is now just about trying to get those appropriate positions. His bishop's jammed in at the minute, babysitting this pawn. Obviously the rook is gonna be coming down to attack the queen. So we bring the rook attacking the pawn. And then move the pawn down. Still expecting this rook to come down here. I mean, we have play across here and such like, or coming here attacking the pawn. So we start angling to fight, face another pawn, <coughs> the pawn which the bishop is jammed in on. So as expected the rook did come down, so, whoopsie daisy, I'm going too fast aren't I? <laughs> rook did come down. And at this moment during this game I, I felt like that bloke that took about five minutes over a, game, over a move um, when he was out and out winning on quite a lot of the games but he still won the tournament and like I said probably because people fell asleep but uh, he did have dynamic play but he just took his time over the move, savoured every single movement and it was like he was internally en enjoying the game of chess and there was no rush, he could take his time. So we bring the queen back, looking to see how we can end. Is it going to be a, a checkmate or is it going to be a slow grind of taking pieces off the board? So he's attacking the far pawn, so we can push this pawn for the queen to protect or we can push the rook up just to defend. So we choose to push the rook up. So now it's looking like they're just giving up pieces, trading down, basically saying, well, that's the end of the game. So we can afford to trade down now and if we don't do anything silly then we should be okay. So they grab Bishop still tied to this pawn must be feeling a little bit infuriated. So we push the pawn up now because we're still defending here but we don't really want the queen defending there so probably bring the rook here supporting and then the queen can get into some activity, maybe attacking the pawn here or facing off the uh, king and giving it some pressure that way. Rook comes down looking to cause some sort of issue. Well, that was it. Excuse me, we want to get the rook um, potentially coming here, but at this point in time, attacking the rook seems feasible also attacking the pawn so the rook goes back I mean this pawn is but this pawn is unprotected so we're gonna to have to bring the rook here before we even consider taking the pawn so just keeping it simple but being mindful of what blind spots we do have if we are looking to attack because you could lose the advantage quite easily if you're not playing it right So they push the pawn down, so the queen can actually go and take the pawn and it's going to be on this pawn as well. He's trying to just relieve his bishop. 
So it grabs the pawn, also on the rook, so it has to do something about the rook. Oops. So this pawn looks available. Could put a check on the king just to be a bit of a menace. King moves back. So now it's just giving pieces up. In in essence, really, it's like basically saying, "Well, it's over," but it doesn't have a resign button does it it does it doesn't resign itself so you have to take the game through to the end so apologies we know we're going to kind of <clears throat> win this particular game but just taking it through to the end just practicing the end because you could face an opponent who just doesn't resign and they hope that you make a mistake of some sort so you still have to practice your maneuvers if you don't practice these things you might make a mistake and as basic and simple as it might look somebody might just want you to take it take for you to take them to checkmate you might stalemate them it's hard to see that in this type of position but it can happen he's got no pieces attacking it and um, protecting his king area so it really should be finished but I can only move as fast as my brain will move just to make sure that I don't stalemate <laughs> in any way shape or lose any pieces because you know I've seen things like this done yeah queen putting a check here and then the bishop takes because they get tunnel vision these things do happen people so practicing end games like this really isn't a futile thing it's just something that I think definitely for me I need to hone okay so I'm still babysitting this rook here and realistically I shouldn't really be babysitting this rook maybe give my king a bit of a flight square and then get this baby rocking and rolling because the queen cannot do it by itself yes it can take off loads of pieces off the ball but eventually I'm going to need another piece to work with the queen so we put another check on like I said yeah it can keep putting checks on but it's going to need another piece in there to help it out So the position that they put themselves in gives us a nice little situation so we can actually take the rook off the board. Yeah. Cuz you have to think I am not no I'm not a grandmaster. I'm only like 13 or 8, you know, over the board, real over the board. So in essence, this sort of stuff should be like my gold dust. I, I've got to practice this. You know, I'm not saying that the grandmasters don't need to but I've still got to practice this. Yes, they've got a bishop, and but he's getting rid of his pieces. He might get himself in a position where stalemate might occur. You never know. But it's hard pressed to see that because his king is up the board. I'm hovering over the wrong screen. <laughs> And what this, the reason why, I, yeah, I mean, this is nice. I mean, I did that on purpose as well, you know, for him doing that, because obviously the queen. I'm, I'm hovering over the wrong screen. <laughs> oh dear me, that's making me laugh. Right, okay, so 
yeah so the queen can put a check on the king now and then we can push this pawn up here the reason why I go on about this type of end game stuff is and I remember one particular game where I had a queen and I was playing a higher rated player and they lost all their pawns and stuff like that and I was going to get a promote another promotion with my queen I'd, and they were moving really fast they were down on time and I moved that quick it ended up being a stalemate how annoying is that so definitely practicing this sort of stuff is crucial for me in not going super speedy fast just because their time's running out or just because they've got less pieces on the board or because you've got more material you know more material or whatever you've got to take your time because that stuff burns when you've got a winning opportunity and it just gets fluffed by a stalemate okay so it's all pretty straightforward stuff now pushing down uh, okay looking to get the rook in the game but obviously a bit previous there okay so bringing the rook into the game wanting to keep some constant checks on the king now just from lessons learned just make sure that we can get a proper checkmate if we've got the opportunity so I would say to anyone never ever feel bad if you're playing a game like this and you've got loads of pieces up etc um, you're not bullying the person if they're continuing on like stockfish is because it doesn't have like a resign button um, but if you're playing somebody online or over the board and you're in this type of position I definitely don't feel bad just make sure that you can get the finish on and you're not being caught short with a stalemate situation and that was the game 